Hi, I'm William Spaniel. Let's learn some game theory. Today's topic is multiple subgame perfect equilibria. I cover this in lesson 2.3 of Game Theory 101, the complete textbook. So in the minimal amount of extensive form games that we've seen so far, we've only encountered games that have a single unique subgame perfect equilibrium, and that's true for most games but there can be times where you have multiple subgame perfect equilibria. And so really this video is going to talk about when that can happen and show an example of it. In fact, the example that we'll be looking at today is this game right here. So player one begins this game by choosing to stay or go. And if he chooses to go, then player two then chooses left or right. And following that, we see something that we've never encountered before. So player one, when he makes his move, he doesn't actually know whether player two has chosen left or right. This dashed line here is indicative of that fact. And so he's, his options are going to be to go up or down. So we see up or down on either side. But when he makes this move, he can't actually observe whether player two has gone left or right before. He's in the dark in regards to that. Now, when we've been solving games before, what we would do is we would just use backward induction, where we would start at the end and work our way upward. We can't do that fully here. We can't just look at, say, this subgame right here, because this isn't actually a subgame. Player one doesn't actually know he's here for sure when he makes his move whether to go up or down. And likewise, he doesn't know for sure whether he's here when he makes this move up or down. He just knows that player two has made a move. Either she's gone left or she's gone right, but he doesn't know which is the case. And moreover, this is... This is troublesome here because if player two goes left, then player one would rather go up because three is greater than negative one. But if player two went right, then now we'd rather go down because zero is greater than negative two. So we can't just chop off this subgame right here and look at that and try to solve it or cut it off right here and try to solve that because player one doesn't actually have that sort of information. So we can't pretend like he does as we're trying to solve this game. Now the solution is actually really simple. Rather than cutting it off here, where we can't actually cut it off because player one doesn't have that information, we can cut it off instead of down there, instead up here, get rid of this top move, and actually look at this part of the game as a proper subgame. This is an actual subgame, this is fine, and we can solve for the Nash equilibria here, and then work our way upward using the Nash equilibrium from this game. So when player one makes this move, he doesn't actually know whether player two has gone left or right, and so that actually makes this effectively a simultaneous move game. This is exactly how we define simultaneous move games back in the last unit. And because we're really good at solving those games, because we've already done it for the full unit, we should be able to be uh, we should be able to solve this game no problem and be able to use the expected utilities from here for this move that was up here. So in fact, we've actually seen this game before. If we take these moves and put them into a strategic form game, we get this, and this is the zero-sum mixed strategy game that we looked at way back a long time ago when we were looking at the mixed strategy algorithm. So you'll notice that player two still has the same moves, left, right, and player one has the same moves, up, down, and all of these payoffs correspond to what we saw over here. And so we're going to solve this game right here and then use those payoffs to work our way back upward. We don't actually have to solve this game because we've already done it, so I'm just going to reference what we've already done in the last unit. The solution to this game is player one goes up with probability one-sixth, down with probability five-sixth, and player two goes left with probability one-third, and right with probability two-thirds, and that's the unique Nash equilibrium of this game. But in order to actually figure out whether player one should go here, we need to figure out it's his expected utility for going. So we know that in the equilibrium, we know what player two is going to do, whether she's going left or right, she's going to mix there. And we know that player one is going to mix between up and down, but we need to actually measure the quality of this outcome for player one to compare it uh, to how much he's going to earn to stay, right? Because we need to know whether he should stay or go. And so in order to be able to measure that, we need to actually have an expected utility here. Now that means we need to take the expected uh, utility or calculate the expected payoff of this game given the mixed strategy Nash equilibrium. But again, we know how to do that because that's something that we covered in the last unit, which is why we did all of that work in the last unit because we can apply all of that now and we're really good at applying it now. So remember that the first step when you're calculating payoffs is to multiply the probability of each individual outcome of happening. So this up left outcome occurs with probability 1 6 times 1 3rd, which is 1 18th. This one with probability 5 6 times 1 3rd, which is 5 18th. This one with probability 1 6 times two-thirds, which is two-eighteenths, and this one with probability five-sixths times two-thirds, which is ten-eighteenths. We then take these probabilities and multiply them by the payoffs of the respected outcome. So we need to look at player one's payoffs here. 
So we're looking at player one's payoffs. We're ignoring player two's payoffs. So we'd multiply three times that, negative two times that, negative one times that, and zero times that. And so that's redoing it here. We get to 3 18 plus negative 4 18 plus negative 5 18 plus 0. And that just sums up to negative 6 18 or negative 1 third. So rather than looking at this whole game right now, we can chop off this and just look at what happens with those payoffs based off of the Nash equilibrium of this subgame. And I've already substituted player twos in here. But the important information here is negative one third is the payoff for player one. And because player two doesn't have a move here, this payoff is actually inconsequential, which is why we're not going to do it ourselves. But if you want to double check on your own, you can verify that her payoff here is going to be one third. Now, in comparing this, this choice for player one, if he stays, he gets negative one third. If he goes, he gets negative one third. That means, in fact, he is indifferent between staying and going. Because if he stays, he's getting the same payoff in expectation as if he goes. Because of this mixed strategy Nash equilibrium, we know that he's going to get negative one third if he goes, and that's the same payoff as if he stays. So that means it doesn't matter what player one does. That means there are multiple subgame perfect equilibria. So specifically, in this, uh, in any subgame perfect equilibria, or to describe what those subgame perfect equilibria look like, player one goes with probability uh, p and stays with probability one minus p where p can be any probability. So for example, p could just be 1 and player 1 plays go as a pure strategy, or st uh, or p could be 0, and that means the probability plays stay is 1, so he's playing stay as a pure strategy, or he can mix freely in between those two things. It doesn't matter, and there are infinitely many of those, right? He can play any probability here, and that's going to be part of a subgame perfect equilibrium. And then regardless of his choice here, he plays up with probability 1 sixth and down with probability 5 sixth, while player one uh, player two plays left with probability one third and right with probability two thirds. So that's why there are infinitely many subgame perfect equilibria, and that's how you describe those subgame perfect equilibria, remembering that P is any probability here. But just to recap, the important takeaway point when we're trying to look for subgame perfect equilibria, what's going to cause there to be multiple subgame perfect equilibria is the presence of this indifference, where player one is completely indifferent. He's exactly indifferent between staying and getting negative one third and going and getting negative one third. If these were just slightly different payoffs, for example, if this were negative 0.33 instead of one third, well, that would make go strictly better for him than stay because negative 0.33 is greater than negative uh, one third or 0.3333333 and so forth. So it requires this exact indifference for us to get this multiple subgame perfect equilibria. And having exact difference like this is really rare, which is why you will most of the time not encounter games that have multiple subgame perfect equilibria. Usually you'll just have a single subgame perfect equilibrium and your life is easy. But of course, when we're writing exams and homework questions, we like to throw curveballs at you and that sort of thing, which is why you'll often run into times uh, where you have multiple subgame perfect equilibria. But those things are are actually fairly rare in practice. All right, so that wraps up this video on multiple subgame perfect equilibria, and that is the very lightning quick crash course on how to find subgame perfect equilibria. And in the next video, we'll start actually using subgame perfect equilibria for, for actual applications. So specifically, we're going to start looking at how to make threats credible. Because remember, the study of subgame perfect equilibria is really the study of credible threats. So we're going to start out uh, our actual study of, of credible threats by looking at how one can tie one's hands by burning a bridge to achieve a better payoff. So that wraps up this video. Join me in that next video. Take care.